Welcome back to Wonderworld, we're seven weeks in now and the park is forming its own unique collection of coasters. Especially with the completion of the Intamin Launch family coaster that I made in last week's episode. So if you haven't seen episode 6 where I built this coaster, the link will be in the description. Now for this episode. I'm going to theme the coaster and give the ride a backstory that ties in with the whole story of the park, just like the Mac Big Dipper. Speaking of the story, let me explain it to all of you. A long time ago there was a family that lived in this castle. It was surrounded by lavish gardens and had been in the father's family for generations. The man was a scientist and inventor, like his father before him, and was highly regarded in the county for his brilliant mind. The grounds of the castle were peaceful and the family happy. That was until his wife was to unexpectedly die whilst walking the grounds, found only a few hours later by her husband. This drove the scientist insane, trying to find a way to cheat death and to bring his wife back to him. Locked away for months in a large shed not too far from the castle, he experimented with machines far too complicated for the average scientist to even comprehend, trying to bring her back. He challenged the ideas of natural law and sought to create a machine to reverse the entropy of time to save her from death. After what felt like years of the man being hidden away, he mysteriously packed up most of his belongings and both him and his children left their home, never to be seen again. It is now said that the spirit of his wife haunts the land and their home, unrested and unsettled by the attempts to break the natural law and bring her back to life. And now you know the story for this coaster and how it links in with the park-wide theme. The machines and shed on the land that I was alluding to is obviously the Mac Big Dipper coaster that we built a few episodes ago. Like I said, it's the same story all around the park, so as you go through the different areas you'll find out different parts of the story throughout the day. Like I said a few episodes ago, this story happened a long time ago, so what I'm building here is basically one of the spires of the castle ruins that has fallen over and landed on the main station building. I just really wanted to give the sense that the castle had decayed and like fallen to bits over time, so I'm quite happy with how it looks. And speaking of decaying things, we need to name the Mac Big Dipper. Now, I don't think in all my time of doing YouTube have I had a more suggested name. There was so many of the suggested name. Comments are up on the screen now, as you can see. It took me a bit of convincing, but then I realised that the name Pandora works perfectly with the story, as it could be the machine named after the man's wife that he tried to use to bring her back. So, I've chosen Pandora for the ride name. I really like it. It fits quite well. So, yeah, thank you for those suggestions. And now that you all know the story behind this ride, you can go ahead with your name suggestions in the comments. I'd like something quite simple that could maybe include the word castle, but it doesn't have to, but something that you can kind of get a feel for the story with. So that's your challenge for this week, and I'm really excited to see what you all come up with. Just around some of the points on the path where the coaster gets really close, I added these wooden fences for multiple purposes really. But the main one being, because of how close the track is to the path, any loose articles that could fall off could hit people as they're walking past, so this just protects them. Here I am just adding some more details onto the fallen tower spire thing that's crashed into the station, just to make it look really old and overgrown. Although I did really like the original design for the roof, it kind of reminded me how the swarm station is at Thought Park, where it actually looks really cool, but if you think about it, it's not very practical in case it rains, because you're just going to get soaked if you stand underneath it. So I added these scaffolding boards to give the station a proper roof. Next I moved on to the entrance bridge of the ride, using the same castle pieces I used for the station and the walls. I then went on to render the drop track structure that I built in the last episode. Obviously I don't want guests to be able to see the drop track mechanism from off ride, and it also needs to blend into the castle building behind so that it doesn't stand out too much. It's all about creating a natural feel for an area where everything just looks right, and like it belongs. A tip that I recently learned is you can make a slanted underside to your building just using the roof pieces, but just using the back of them instead. This gives the guests more headroom as they come out from underneath this structure, but is also just an interesting look for the building and varying the design. And then just like the Mac Bay Dipper coaster, I started fleshing out the inside of the building with these black screens. And then I covered the roof with more scaffolding board, 
The reason why I'm not covering the ground is because the drop track needs to actually bring the train to the lower level. So if this was covered, it'd just, you know, get stuck. After this, I just use more of the castle pieces to flesh out the design of the facade of the drop track building. Making sure to vary the design as I go to keep it interesting. Here I'm just adding a themed facade to the side of the maintenance building, and then the other side I'll just fill in concrete because this side is never going to see guests. Then I use these locomotive rails to create a metal rolling door, just for access to the trains. Then I gave the building a roof with these black art pieces. I'll only ever allow stealing if it's stealing from yourself, so I went over to the maintenance area of the Mac Bay Dipper Coaster and stole the maintenance curtain, just to hide the transfer tracks. Then I moved on to what will be most of the main theming structure for the area, which is the actual abandoned castle. I made this by just using the kind of damaged castle pieces that were already in the game, and then these like piles of rubber here that I think are from the adventure pack, just colouring them grey instead of the normal sandstone colour. Then to make it look all overgrown and abandoned, I added foliage, foliage, and even more foliage. I even created little outbuildings like this that might not have even been part of the castle, but just buildings that were on the property that again have been demolished and abandoned. You've probably noticed as I'm building this, but there's quite a large gap in between this Intamin coaster and the Mac coaster from the previous episodes. So just remember that later in the series. I'll build something there eventually, I promise, but it'll be worth the wait. Just keeping the area around the ride interesting, I made this fly-through structure that'd act as a great head chopper for the guests. And then because the junction of these two areas looked a bit messy, I brought the Victorian tile from the main street into this area, bringing it right up to the castle slabs of the wall, which act as a good barrier and a natural transition between the areas. And then I had to flesh this dead space out with something, so I made these really large planters. In later episodes I might change these to either shops or seating areas, but it's nice to always have the option of a space for multi-use. Here you can see I'm fitting out the lanes in the station with these barn doors. This is a great looking older wood because it's quite dark and damaged, but it also helps the station to look a lot older and actually like an abandoned house, given the idea that these are pieces of furniture. I then made these old looking bag racks out of these planks from the spooky pack. Again in an effort to make the station look more like a room in this castle than an actual ride station, I covered the loading area in wood. Then I gave this elevated area of the queue the same castle piece treatment as the rest of the queue, and then realised because of the tower there'd be no headroom to get around this corner so I had to make a few adjustments. Then because of this new cut through that's opened up between this intermin and the first coaster we made in the park, I added this don't die fence in between the two areas. There's an already existing natural barrier because of all the foliage and vegetation in this area, but having a physical fence is just always a good way to improve safety within your park.
and because there's so many good viewpoints of this coaster from the path, I added these viewpoints where the guests would actually come up and take photos. Here I'm just readjusting the staircase I made in the previous episode which would act as the evacuation point for the drop track. And just to add some extra drama to the drop track, I added this retracting door that will open once the drop track has performed its drop to keep the riders in darkness before they exit the building. Onto the final part now, which is the exit ramp for the road. I just kept up with the castle theming, thinking it would almost be like a border to the land of the castle area. Whereas now it obviously just connects the ride back to the rest of the park. Here I'm just adding some foliage to the evac area we made in last episode. So if the train launches and fails to get it up, <laughs> then it would roll back down and stop in a safe way here. And that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching again. This series is going really well and I'm so happy with how the park's turning out. Again, comment some amazing ride names below for your chance to get picked, and I'll see you next week. Here we are, back on Main Street again. And there is a new feature at the end of Main Street now that you can see, which is the massive Intamin family coaster we've built this episode. I'm so happy with how this has turned out. Just the way it looks at the end of the uh, Main Street is just perfect, exactly how I wanted it to. This whole park was built off of the existing castle that was here, so it would make sense that it would be like quite a grand feature, originally anyway, before the coaster came along, like at the end of the main street, so I'm really happy with how this has turned out. Especially these viewing areas I've made here, just watching the coaster, the two coasters here duel each other, not two coasters, it's one coaster, <laughs> the way uh, different parts of the coaster here duel each other is just so satisfying, even with these photo points that I've made, that the guests will actually come up and use as well, which will look quite cool. But yeah, I'm just so happy with it, especially with how the water looks in this game, the reflections just look so cool. See if you can get a good view of the uh, trains coming past. There you go. Is this going to be a good dueling one? Yes. Sometimes they're a little bit out of sync, but I think it's like only one of the four trains is sometimes out of sync, the other three are perfectly in sync, so that was quite good. I'm happy with that. Obviously the planters on the right, I'll come back and uh, change them at some point later in the park series, but it just looks so good. Like this first turnaround section here is just such a good like sight line to see as you're approaching the ride. I like the interaction between the two coasters as well, the old and new family coasters. So we'll go in. Obviously need a uh, name for this ride, so if you get commenting some nice suggestions, I'm sure you'll probably come up with some amazing ones because you always do. I love entering over this bridge as well, perfect timing with the coaster as always. It really sets the tone for the rest of the ride, and once the whole park's completed, this area will look a little bit more complete, because the different sight lines, you'll be able to see other attractions from it as well. I love that launch going up there. I've no idea where that idea actually came from, it just kind of happened, but I like the way it's worked out. That section there, you can definitely tell, is inspired by Taran. The kind of double, triple S-bend section after the uh, second launch. I just really wanted to try and recreate that, but obviously in a less forceful, more family coaster style way. So I'm quite happy with that that's turned out. And obviously, like I mentioned in the previous episode, this track type is just so easy to smooth. So if you want to make like a first kind of launched coaster in Planet Coaster, then the uh, torque track type is definitely a good one to go with. And then as we progress down here, you get even better views of the coaster the further you go into the actual ride. I'm so happy with that view. That's definitely going to be the thumbnail if I haven't made it yet already. It just works so well, even when you go under it as well. It's at different changes of height and space. There's the uh, access there for the, the block break evacuation point thing. I love going underneath this tower, it's so cool. And obviously you come out this side, it opens up into kind of like... A courtyard or more of like what's left of a courtyard. The view of 
view of the drop trap building there. I love how you can't really tell what that is off ride, like it just goes in at a height and then comes out a little bit lower and obviously if you don't know a whole lot about roller coasters you probably won't know what's going on in there so. Just the same way with 13, I don't know whether you've ever been on it, if you pull into the uh, drop track section on 13 and you've got people on the train that have never been on it before, it's always so funny. Just to hear them, hear them scream, just like pure terror because they don't know it's coming. And then we go into the station building, which I'm really happy with as well. There's still holes in the roof obviously, but you could have glass over those I suppose in real life so that rain doesn't still come through, but then you've got stations like the Swarm anyway that are completely outside, so... I like how it just fires through the roof as well. <laughs> that would be so loud in real life. I could probably add some sound effects as well for that, I might go, go back and do that after this. Anyway, enjoy the off-ride POV and then tease for next week's episode.